Hello again, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to combine Google SketchUp with your PowerPoint portfolio that you're going to have to produce for your NEA. So I'm going to show you how we can quickly draw, sketch, and then copy and paste our finished drawings into PowerPoint and so that you can write them up for your NEA. Okay, this is obviously not going to be your actual NEA, this is going to be a test, but you can see how a page should be laid out, the sort of things that should be on it, um, and how you can do that quickly and efficiently. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is open up PowerPoint. So just start a new um, design, make sure it's blank. I don't want any designs on the background. Okay, and the first thing you're going to do is write a title. Now your titles on your PowerPoint for your NEA should not be any bigger than 24 point. I don't mind necessarily which font you use as long as it's easy to read and it is consistent throughout your PowerPoint. Okay. You can see that I have already done some different designs in here and they look pretty good. I've put different um, textures on which I will show you in another video. Okay, so you will need that open at some point. So we're gonna to go to SketchUp, which I've already got open. Here's our basic work environment. Now, I've still got the man there. You can have him there if you want to see, it's quite helpful if you want to see in, re in relative to what you've drawn, how big it is. Um, but he's gonna get in my way, so I'm gonna delete him. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, as in the previous video, we're gonna draw a rectangle 150 comma space 45 okay and we are going to create a type of frame joint called a mitre joint okay now I can draw the mitre in here as it's flat and then extrude it up or I can draw it onto the extrusion and cut it off it doesn't matter which way around you do it one of the things you will need to do is to use the tape measure tool and this allows you to make markers at certain points. So if I click on this edge, I know this distance is 45, you'll see it tells me there. I want to come 45 this way, so I'm going to type 45, press enter, and it's made a little marker here. So now what I can do is I can take the pencil tool and I can draw a straight line from that corner to that corner and click and you can see there I've got my 45. Now I want to rub off this bit so I can use the eraser tool and you can either click once like so or you can click and drag and it will delete off a few things. It's also deleting off my marker so that's fine. Now I'm going to extrude that shape 12 millimeters because that's the thickness of the piece of wood we're using okay and then i'm going to do as i showed you in the other video i'm going to select it all and right click and make a group so i have it grouped okay now i want to copy that so i've got the other side of it so this would be as if you're using it on a picture frame or other tabletop frame okay it's quite a common frame joint so i'm going to use the move tool Click on it, press control, and place that there. And then you can see if I hover over one of these, I can actually rotate. So I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. And then it's facing the wrong way. So I'm going to come to the end here, click once, take my finger off the button, rotate 180 degrees, and you can see it can now line up. I'm going to click right in this corner so I can move it. Remember, you need to release the button each time you click. Don't hold the button down. Lock to that point, click again, and there we have a nice mitre joint. Okay, at the moment, it's just a drawing with no color on it. So I'm now going to use the paint bucket tool. There we go, paint bucket tool. And I'm going to apply a render to it. So on the right here, and it's the same online, you'll have the materials block somewhere. Just open up the materials tab. You, we're going to use wood, so we're going to come down here, find wood, because yours might default to something else. 
and we're just going to put a wood veneer on it. I'm going to put a light veneer. So just click on those and you'll see it colors the whole thing. Okay, now that's now ready to be output to PowerPoint. Now, what you need to do is to choose the best angle for that to be displayed on your PowerPoint. Zoom in, zoom out. Okay, you'll see that the thick, thin lines are already present. So as if we were drawing a 3D shape by hand, we'd apply thick, thin lines. You can see that's already on there, including the join here. Now, I don't want these axes in my PowerPoint, so I'm going to go to View, and you can see the axes are all ticked. So I'm going to click on axes and they will disappear. Okay, now I've just got the joint. I can rotate it to a suitable angle. Um, if you want a specific view, then on camera, I can go to standard views and these will give me certain views. Some of them are probably not very helpful. So if I wanted a top view, I could do that. Standard views, if I wanted a front view. Now those are more useful if you're doing working drawings or orthographics. Could do an isometric. So that's an isometric view. I think something in perspective would be better. Okay, I'm going to hit the print screen button. Then I'm going to go to my PowerPoint. Now, an easy way to flick between different programs is if you hit the Alt and Tab key, you'll see all your programs that you have open come up. And then you can just click on your PowerPoint and it will flick between them. So it's a quick way of doing that. Okay, I'm just going to put in a new slide just so that you can see how to do this. Don't want any of that, so I'm going to delete that. Control V will paste, so Control and V together. So these are quick shortcuts that I'm trying to teach you here. Double click on your image, use the crop tool. Just quickly crop it down to size. Okay, and then you can just resize it on your page. And you'll see that comes out nice and cleanly on your page. Okay, now if I had, let's say I wanted an exploded view just to show. Okay, I will print screen that, Alt Tab to go to PowerPoint, Control V to paste, double click, crop. Click off somewhere. Now you'll see that the white of the overlap is still showing. So we can get rid of that. If I double click the image again and I go to color and then click transparent color, set transparent color, click on the white and you'll see it's made that, taken away the white. Okay, which means that we can then, I can do the same on that one. Means that I can then put these very close together without them covering each other up. Okay, then you can add text as is. Okay, thank you for watching.